Good morning. Welcome to the kickoff of the official start of the Southern Virginia Regional Alliance. My name is Jeremy Stratton. I'm the chairman of the board, and the board consists of the economic development directors for the region, which includes Tom Rose from Patrick County, Mike Sexton from Halifax County, Ken Bowman from Pennsylvania County, and Mark Heath from Martinsville, Henry County. Steve Bridges has told me many times that companies do not care about jurisdictional borders. Companies more care about how they're gonna make a profit and how they're gonna run efficiently. So it makes perfect sense that we operate as a region. Mark Heath and I in our previous lives have been regional economic developers. And we say that the toughest part of being a regional economic developer is getting the localities to trust each other and to work together. There are several dignitaries here in the audience that we need to recognize for, and thank them for coming and supporting regionalism. First, and if you could please stand, Deputy Secretary of Commerce, Mary Ray Carter. She gets the Goodyear Tire Award. I don't know of anyone that, <laughs> I don't know of anyone that has spent more time on Southern Virginia's roads than Mary Ray. I don't know, I think I'm a close second. <laughs> Senator Frank Ruff. Virginia Delegate James Edmonds, Delegate Danny Marshall, Delegate Don Merricks, and we'll go down to the locality level. Board of Supervisors James Sneed from Pennsylvania County. He's the Vice Chair. Greg Sides, he's the Assistant County Administrator for Pennsylvania County. Moving over for Danville, uh, we have my boss here City Manager Joe King, uh, Mayor Sherman Saunders. From Martin, uh, excuse me, from Halifax County, we have uh, Doug Bowman, the Chairman of the Finance Committee. Uh, Nancy Poole, the President of the Chamber of Commerce. And some of the other people that we have here today, and I'm trying to catch everyone. If I miss one, please let me know. I don't want to make a big mistake on that. Uh, we have Sarah Cass from the Tobacco Commission. And we have Glenn Roycroft, who's the ED Authority Chairman for Patrick County. Did I, did I get everybody? I'm going to borrow a line from our mayor. He always says this, if I didn't catch you, you're probably more important than the rest of us. <laughs> there are several people that have made this Southern Virginia Regional Alliance possible and I'm gonna briefly go over them. Uh, Liz Povar, she's not here today, but she's responsible for keeping us together and uh, making this thing happen. Uh, I know many times that she's frustrated with us economic developers, and probably especially me, uh, but she, she's a, a big reason why we're here. And also we mentioned earlier the Virgi Virginia Tobacco Commission, the support that they've given to regionalism and to all the projects that we've had locate here in recent history. Lastly, but most importantly though, we have the architect of the Southern Virginia Regional Alliance right here with us, Lieutenant Governor Bill Bowling. When Lieutenant Governor Bill Bowling approached us about a year and a half ago about doing this, he didn't say, well, you guys should just think about being a regional organization. He said, you will be a regional organization, and I'm gonna keep following up until you get it done. And he kept to his word, he continually followed up either in person or in phone calls to make sure that we were making progress. So my hat is off to you. We would not be here today if it weren't for Lieutenant Governor Bill Bowling. If anybody knows anything about economic developers, we, we, do, we can't agree on the time of day and uh, we're often very skeptical. And I think he understood our psychology and he, he made sure that it happened. Lieutenant Governor Bowling, is in his second term. Previous to his position here, he was uh, in the Virginia Senate for 10 years, and he was also a Board of Supervisor Chairman for Hanover County. In his first term as Lieutenant Governor, Bill Bowling concentrated on health care issues. Now in his second term, and it coincided with our economic downturn, probably a little bit later by that, but he has concentrated on job creation and is affectionately called the Virginia Job Creation Czar, and he's done a tremendous job on that despite the economic times. 
I want you to give a, a warm welcome to our Lieutenant Governor, Bill Bowling. Well, it is good to be here. What a beautiful day to, uh, to be in Southern Virginia and in South Boston and Halifax. And I told Jeanne as we were coming down here this morning, it's hard to believe we have to go back and do hurricane duty. You know, as beautiful as it looks outside, this has been an odd week. You know, we started off dealing with earthquakes and we're gonna end up the week dealing with hurricanes. So I can't think of a better place to be this morning than here, helping you all uh, celebrate the official kickoff of the, uh, of the Southern Virginia a regional alliance. Uh, uh, it's hard to follow Jeremy. He, uh, you know, did a great job thanking uh, everybody who helped make this uh, possible. He was very kind with the words he uh, had to say about me. Uh, the one thing that he left out was that not only did we come uh, uh, suggesting that it would be a good idea to do an alliance, we also dangled a couple hundred thousand dollars out there as an incentive, uh, uh, which never hurts. And, uh, sometimes I've always, uh, you know, I've always believed you sometimes can uh, uh, do do better with uh, honey than vinegar and uh, and a carrot instead of a stick. And uh, the real credit for putting this organization together uh, doesn't rest with us for uh, proposing it or even even putting up some incentive money. Uh, it really rests with the local governments that uh, are here today because you all uh, have the ability to either say yes, you wanted to be a part uh, of a regional alliance, or you had the ability to say no. And fortunately, you all chose to say yes. And uh, uh, so it is to your credit that we're here today. And I just thank you all for providing the, um, the leadership that's necessary to see the importance of working together uh, as opposed to um, uh, always competing with each other. And not that competition's a bad thing. Competition can be a good thing. And, and I know there'll still be a little competition in, in, within the alliance, and that's, that's a good thing. But the fact that... Uh, uh, the, the localities, uh, the six localities involved in this alliance have chosen to promote Southern Virginia as a region, uh, I think is uh, really going to be the key to our success. Uh, one, one of the things that um, uh, a lot of folks uh, don't know is that when I started uh, my uh, political career back in 1991, uh, I was elected chairman of the Hanover County Board of Supervisors, and totally unbeknownst to me that year, it was Hanover County's year to chair something called the Metropolitan Economic Development uh, Commission, uh, which was the regional uh, public sector economic development entity for the metropolitan Richmond region. Uh, so I, I went literally from taking the oath of office to becoming chairman of this regional economic development authority, which I knew nothing uh, about. And I remember sitting down with the executive director of the authority at the time and saying, you know, if I'm going to be chair of this thing, I, don't, I, I just don't want to, you know, hang around. I want to do something. What can we do to do something with this organization? And, and he proposed, he said to me, well, if we really want to do something, what we need to do is take this from being a public sector only entity to becoming a public and private sector entity, involve the business community in economic development, make them full partners with the Metropolitan Economic Development uh, uh, Commission. So, uh, you know, I went out in the first speech I ever gave, I still remember it at the Jefferson Hotel and proposed that we do that. And it wasn't easy. I mean, you think it's hard, you know, getting uh, local governments to work together on a regional basis, try to get the public sector and the private sector sometimes to work together on a cooperative basis. It took us two years to get it done. But out of that effort emerged what is now called the Greater Richmond Economic Development Partnership. Uh, we doubled the budget of that organization by bringing the private sector into the table. I, I tell that story just to, just to make this point. Um, you know, it is important that we all work together to try to promote economic development and job creation. You know, local governments working together, forming regional alliances, public sector, private sector. You know, we all have a stake uh, in this uh, effort. And uh, in reality, we're here today because a lot of people had a stake in this effort and worked with us to, uh, to help make this possible. Let me just real quick, and at the risk of uh, repeating a couple of the things that, that Jeremy said, I nonetheless think it needs to be said. First of all, I want to thank our partners in the General Assembly uh, because the money that we were able to put up for this type of a regional cooperative effort uh, would not have been possible had we not had partners in the legislature who agreed with us that we needed to appropriate funds uh, for this purpose. And I can tell you, uh, Senator Ruff and Delegate Marshall, Delegate Merricks, Delegate Edmonds, and others were all great advocates uh, of our effort to do this uh, here in Southern Virginia. In fact, working with uh, Senator Ruff, we're working right now to do a similar um, uh, alliance, uh, uh, regional uh, partnership, 
uh, for what I call the eastern part of Southern Virginia. This one, you know, dealing more with the western part of, uh, of Southern Virginia. So our legislative partners uh, deserve a lot of credit for understanding and helping and supporting our efforts to provide some incentive money to make this happen. As I mentioned earlier, obviously the local governments. Uh, uh, your local um, economic development directors, uh, who I, I remember the first time we met with them, I hope they don't mind me telling this story, uh, and we proposed this. I will tell you, they were enthusiastic about it from day one. They weren't quite sure how the local governments would react because we were asking that in addition to the $200,000 that the state put up to incentivize this alliance, we were asking the localities to match it. And in tough economic times, they weren't quite sure, you know, whether that would, would, would work or not. Uh, but to their credit, uh, they took it back to the local governing bodies and advocated for it. And again, all the local government officials uh, who uh, recognized the value of this and stepped up to the plate and put in uh, the $200,000 in matching funds to make it uh, work. So I really uh, do appreciate our local uh, partners. And the Tobacco Commission, I mean, goodness, what can you say about the Tobacco Commission? It is really the, uh, you know, the, 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 the big error that we have in our quiver, frankly, in Southern Virginia and Southwest Virginia right now is the tremendous help and support that we get from the Tobacco Commission. And uh, we really do appreciate that. And the Tobacco Commission became a partner matching that uh, $200,000. So we ended up with a pot of about $600,000 to put this alliance uh, together. And it was just because of the work of all of those uh, folks. Um, Jeremy also mentioned VEDP, um, Liz Povar and uh, her team, um, uh, Mary Ray Carter and her team uh, within the uh, Secretary of Commerce and Trade, all valuable partners uh, in our effort to uh, help uh, pull this thing together. Uh, now, at the risk of that sounding like, you know, we're done, I want to assure you we're not done. You know, we're just getting started. Uh, because now that we've got this alliance up and running, you've got great leadership in place that I'll say more about in just a minute. Um, you know, the hard work starts now. You know, now the hard work starts in putting together our strategic plans and putting together marketing strategies and getting out there and aggressively marketing uh, the six localities that make up the Southern Virginia Alliance. Now the hard work starts. Um, let, me just, let me just make one other point before I introduce Lee and, and bring her up here to say a, a, a few words. You know, you know, I know Southern Virginia has been through a tough time. Uh, you look back over the last decade or so, uh, really ever since probably the passage of NAFTA and the impact that NAFTA had on a lot of our manufacturing uh, base in Southern Virginia, uh, Southern Virginia has been through a tough time. Uh, but I am as um, confident as I am standing here today that this region of our state is as well positioned as any and better than most to take advantage of a future economic resurgence. And that's because of the work that you all have done. Uh, you look at the work uh, with the help of the Tobacco Commission, the broadband capabilities, uh, the mega parks uh, that we're developing all across uh, Southern Virginia and we're just getting started on that. Wonderful facilities like this. Uh, that we're in today. I mean, when I'm up in Northern Virginia talking to companies about Southern Virginia, I often use this facility as an example, and I just tell them, you won't find a finer facility any place you go than this facility. I mean, the, the potential that, that, that exists today, uh, I think, is just uh, tremendous. And we're making progress, uh, you know, on a statewide basis, even in a tough economy, uh, we're making progress. Um, I think the last numbers uh, Jessica sent me on Friday, uh, showed that we had closed, I think, about 575 economic development deals in the last 19 months in Virginia, uh, almost 30% uh, of which are in rural parts of our state, and about half of those in southern Virginia. So, you know, uh, the unemployment rate, you all know, in, in most localities across southern Virginia, it's down four or five points uh, from where it was uh, just 19 months ago. That's still too high. Don't, don't misunderstand I me. Mean, it's still too high. But I was looking, for example, the city of Martinsville, it's 22%, now it's 17%. Well, 17% is still too high. We're not done, but to come from 22% to 17% in, in, in a little over a year and a half in a tough economy, it just shows that folks are working hard and we're accomplishing things. So, you know, I want people to feel optimistic about the future of Southern Virginia. You all have laid a great groundwork here and with the uh, help that hopefully we can continue to give, uh, I really do believe that we are as well positioned right here in Southern Virginia as any part of our state 
to take advantage of a future economic resurgence if we can just get this engine that is the greatest economy in the world running again at the, uh, uh, at the federal level, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. And I, I assure you that uh, Governor McDonnell and I, uh, our entire team, uh, we will be here to help in any way that we can. Uh, you know, as I, I sometimes jokingly say, we're from the government and we're here to help you, okay? And we'd prefer that not be the punchline of the Jay Leno joke. We'd prefer there be some truth to that. But, um, you know, you have not because you ask not. Uh, I'm not saying that we can do everything you ask us to do, but, but if, if there's something we can help with, let us know and we'll try to figure out a way uh, to see if we can do it. Now, let me, uh, let me get out of the way here and bring Lee up here. Uh, you know, one of the big tasks that you all had when you put this alliance together uh, was trying to find somebody to lead uh, the alliance. And I know that you looked uh, far and wide to try to find the right person, and ultimately you found the right person right here. Uh, in Southern Virginia, and I, uh, I don't think you could have made a better selection than uh, Lee Cockrum. She, uh, I have enjoyed working with uh, with her. I think the only no vote was from uh, actually from Mark, wasn't it? Didn't he vote no? But that he didn't. Uh, he didn't want to lose her. But uh, she, uh, she just really is. Uh, she does a wonderful uh, job. Uh, she is, um, uh, you know, she's smart and she's articulate. Uh, she's passionate about promoting economic development in Southern Virginia because she's from Southern Virginia. I mean, this is her, this is her home. And uh, I don't think you could have picked a better person to help lead this organization uh, into the future. And uh, Lee, it's a pleasure for me. Look forward to working with you in this capacity. No, I, I appreciate your support, Lieutenant Governor, and, and the nice words that you said. We really wouldn't be here without your leadership in facilitating the talks amongst all of us to, to finally come to the table and uh, sit down and talk about how we can actually work together to really market the assets that we have collectively. So we really appreciate your leadership there. I'll tell you, when I started with Mark in economic development about three and a half years ago, um, I was, went on a marketing mission, met with site selection consultants. You know, you pull out the state of Virginia map and you say, I'm from Martinsville, Henry County. And they go, well, what region are you in? Well, I'm not in a region. And it's just as, you know, Jeremy said earlier, and Steve has said, companies and Company executives and site selection consultants don't see county, city, town, or even state lines. What they see and remember are regions. They remember the mass capacity of saying we have 27 industrial parks, 17 shovel-ready sites, instead of saying I have two industrial parks and three shovel-ready sites. A population of 69,000 people versus a workforce of 111. So it's building the number story, uh, and that's what we're we're going to be doing with the Southern Virginia Regional Alliance. We're going to be compiling all of our data collectively to market to national and international site selection consultants and to companies to get them to see the true value and the wonderful assets that we have sitting in our back door. From the Care facility here to the world-class Primlin Resort in Patrick County, we have a lot to offer. Uh, it's getting people to the region. Uh, it's interesting. We had, when I was with uh, Mark and Martinsville Henry County, a, a, the state brought through a uh, consultant from Chicago and didn't want to come to Martinsville Henry County, literally met them in the parking lot um, of a shell building and he, they said, this is the nicest part of the state we've been to. This is the nicest industrial park I've seen yet. Uh, it's just getting people here and it's getting our message across to these, to our target audience that this is a place that you can come and do business and do it well and do it right. You know, our labor force is still about 19% of our labor force is in manufacturing today. The U.S. national average is just at nine. We have the workforce still here to do manufacturing. I would say more than 40% of our unemployed have a manufacturing background. So we have the labor force and the skill set needed to let manufacturing, advanced manufacturing companies who we are going to be targeting through this initiative, uh, to know that this is a place that you can come and do business. We have wonderful training facilities um, that sit in our backyard, and when you start pulling those together, building mass capacity of numbers, so you're not just graduating 25 people from um, Danville Community College with a uh, manufacturing certificate, you start graduating from all three or four of our, excuse me, of our universities, and you start building capacity. So you now have 100, 200 people a year coming out with these type of degrees. Uh, that's what we need to start selling to to America, you know, into international companies. Um, we have over, I think it's 12 international companies here uh, in the region that are on our major employer list. They didn't come here 
just because they couldn't do business. They came to Southern Virginia because they knew that this was a place that they could do business and do it well. They could have gone anywhere else in the, in the United States, but they chose Southern Virginia. And we have to start telling that story. And everyone in this room has a role to play in that, from the media to our legislators. We all have a role to play in promoting where we live, what we're trying to um, accomplish for the future. I mean, our goal is to put our citizens back to work. Y'all still a line from the Lieutenant Governor. He always says there are no you know, red jobs or blue jobs or Virginia jobs. Well, there are no Halifax jobs or Danville jobs or Patrick County jobs. They are Southern Virginia jobs because everyone commutes amongst themselves to, um, to find work. And that's what we need to start promoting. Danville's announcement yesterday, 15 jobs in an aerospace um, industry, which is fantastic for our developing our aerospace story. I guarantee you, I will be shocked if all 15 come from the city of Danville that work there. More than likely, they will, some will come from Henry County, some will come from Halifax, some will come from North Carolina. You know, that's just the world that we live in. And we need to start celebrating regionalism and regional announcements because they're putting back all of our citizens to work. And that's what the goal of this organization is going to be. I have to tell you, I've been extremely impressed with the Board of Supervisors, or not supervisors, my board uh, for the Southern Virginia Regional <laughs> Alliance. Sorry, supervisor members. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they've been extremely responsive and um, very dedicated to making this launch successfully. We've been busy over the last two months. I started on June the 15th from doing organizational structures from bylaws to lead protocol agreements uh, to setting up financial you know, reporting to finally getting down to starting developing our mo marketing, branding, and um, website. We're using a local group, Glaren uh, Resources, who's out of Halifax. Lisa Kipps Brown has been working with us on that. And we developed our logo uh, in two weeks. You know, who would have thought with the group that we have, not a knock at you guys, <laughs> but, but that we could come together and, and agree on something in two weeks, you know? It, so it, it's proof that, you know, we are really working together and it's been very exciting. Um, and, and what we're gonna start doing at the end of September, the 1st of October, once our marketing materials are done, is we'll start hitting the road. And I'll be out meeting face-to-face -face with site selection consultants and companies who are looking to expand or relocate, and we'll start telling the story. And once, lead, uh, we, once we get leads that turn into prospects that come to our region, it will be up to the local developers to sell their communities and win the deal. You know, this organization isn't here to take, replace local developers. Um, this organization is here to complement the efforts of what uh, each community's economic development office is doing uh, and to really showcase what we have collectively to bring in more leads. So it, it's a very exciting times. I've been a true believer of regionalism since I started in economic development, um, especially after you know, hearing so many people say, you know, wh well, what region are you in? And you go, we're not in one. Um, I'll tell you another story. Um, a consultant from Austin Consulting, who is a group that do a lot of renewable energy projects, um, food and beverage processing as well, said to me uh, at the round table in the Rockies in March that he couldn't, he was very excited that we were really putting together a regional organization and we were gonna start marketing ourselves that way. And I said, well, you know, what is so exciting to you about that? He said, well, you have wonderful assets, each of your communities do. Uh, you have a lot of water and sewer capacity throughout the region, we have uh, very reliable electrical uh, utilities, Mid-Atlanta Broadband, thank goodness, has been extended throughout all of our industrial parks. Um, but when I put in my database to search for sites, I don't pull up individual communities. We don't look at individual communities. We look at regions, and then we, we look at states, and then we look at regions. We don't have time to go through all of the individual communities that sit in the United States or in even Virginia. So that's a testament to me that regionalism is the way that we need to move forward and we really need to you know, work together and cooperate because that's how we're gonna start getting more visibility and awareness from the folks that are doing the deals. Um, so thank you guys for your support. Um, I appreciate this. And Nestled in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, Southern Virginia offers multiple benefits to a wide variety of industry sectors. Situated on the border of North Carolina, this region is home to advanced manufacturers, along with warehouse distribution and call center back office operations. Southern Virginia is located within a day's drive of 60% of the U.S. population and over two-thirds of the nation's manufacturing base. The region offers convenient access to highway and interstate infrastructure, as well as rail and major airports, making shipping and travel effortless. 
With access to broadband, excellent workforce training programs, and state-of-the-art educational facilities, it's no wonder why so many businesses have chosen to call Southern Virginia home. Essel Propac located its first U.S. manufacturing facility in Southern Virginia in July of 2002. This Indian-based company produces laminated and plastic tubes for the oral, cosmetic, and healthcare industries. They currently employ approximately 273 people. One of the keys to our success here in Southern Virginia has been the support not only of the community, uh, but the programs that are available uh, through workforce development. We've been uh, extremely pleased with the labor force uh, here in Southern Virginia, really from day one. Uh, what we've come to find out is that it's an extremely loyal, dedicated, committed labor force. English-based Drake Extrusion opened their first and only North American manufacturing facility in 1995 in Southern Virginia. Drake, a world leader in polypropylene fibers, has expanded five times since their inception and has over 150 employees. We didn't have a huge amount of experience of uh, working in, uh, in foreign marketplaces, but life could not have been easier for us. I mean, everybody was very helpful. We got the right introductions to, to all the right companies. We had a good customer base, which, which helped us, but uh, really setting up in, in here and having people committed to helping you is just, just a phenomenal experience for us. ABB is a leader in power and automation technologies that enable utilities and industry customers to improve performance while lowering environmental impact. The ABB Southern Virginia facility originally opened its doors in 1968. Their newly expanded manufacturing facility occupies 90,000 square feet. This expansion involved a $27 million investment from the state of Virginia and ABB and created 100 new jobs. ABB now employs approximately 550 people and will increase to 600 by year end. ABB has been able to recruit uh, very good employees into this area as well as already in this area. In April of 2010, EcomNets announced their plans to locate a manufacturing facility in Southern Virginia. The company plans to produce green computers, trademark Vertio, that operate on significantly less power than the personal computers that are currently on the market. EcomNets opened the doors to their new facility in September of 2010 and will employ 160 people. It was economically viable for us to come down here. Um, the economic development was very helpful with incentives. Um, they helped us with location, they helped us with um, uh, finding manufacturing training and all the different things that we needed for a manufacturing facility. The Mid-Atlantic broadband was a big issue for us because we were building a green data center and we wanted to have adequate pipe to run that service as well as our cloud services inside our data center. So that was very important to us. Unique Industries located their distribution center in Southern Virginia in 2001. Unique is a leader in the party supplies and party favors industry. They currently have 400 employees. The key geographic location in Southern Virginia to ports and distribution and major highway networks has really provided us with a low cost uh, distribution network that has uh, dropped our costs significantly from where we formerly were located. Uh, this building was so efficient when we moved here and low cost that we actually consolidated three U.S. operations into this one building at about a third of the normal cost that we had in the previous locations. Fanuel announced in May of this year their plans to create a 250-seat customer care call center in Southern Virginia. Fanuel currently employs 83 and is continuing to hire. Now the best asset of us uh, having this call center in Southern Virginia has really been the employees and the labor that we found here. Uh, the relationship that we have with DBP has been, been wonderful and they're the reason for that is because of the employees we have here. We're already exceeding our quality standards, uh, our handle time goals and other metrics we're doing fabulous at. Our customer service has been so outstanding and the thing that I like is that people here enjoy coming to work. They want to come to work and they want to do a good job so it's been a win-win for everybody so far. Presto is a market leading supplier of products ranging from private label food and disposer bags to specialty stretch films. Their Southern Virginia plant is the largest plant in the Presto operation. It opened in 1980 and currently has over 350 employees and is a mainstay in the thriving Southern Virginia plastic and polymer cluster. Presto's foundation, we believe, um, and our values are based on our people. And we believe that our workforce is key to our continued success. Presto has been in Southside Virginia for over 30 years. Uh, we look forward to having a strong presence in the community for many years to come. 
So join our existing industry base and make Southern Virginia your next home.